So that's the end of the techniques videos for this series, Excel Database Formerly for Beginners. I really hope you found these techniques useful. And I know from my own experience, they can save so much time and stress in the real world. So I hope you find application, applications for them as soon as you can. But before the end of the series, I just wanted to share some of my experiences um, applying these formally in the real world. What are some of the difficulties I've had and how have I managed uh, to work around them and really get these formally working well. So an important topic in databases and the application of these formulae is how to manage the size of the database. So you would have noticed in the techniques videos, I was assuming we had a static database there. So my assumption was there wouldn't be any other data added to the database, the database would remain the same size. If that's the case, um, the process of building the formulae and getting them working is certainly simpler than if you have a database that will have data added to it. But we know from the real, real world, um, databases are kind of living things and people are adding data to them all the time. And whatever database you're working with Excel, you might well be adding data to it. So how would we get around that issue? Because if we hard code, if you like, if we input the row references into the formula, for a certain size of database and then we subsequently add rows, then those rows are not going to be included in the analysis. So we need to think about how we're going to man manage this. How are we going to make it so we can keep adding rows to the database and the analysis will automatically update. Now I found three possible ways to do this. The first way is a kind of manual way. The second way is the way I actually use myself. And the third way is a way I've considered, but um, I, haven't, I haven't really used it myself yet, but it might be something you want to consider. So the first way is to make those references bigger than the data, than the data to allow yourself extra room to put data in. So for example, if you have 500 rows in your data, you could use uh, a thousand rows in the row references for the formulae. So your data might go down to A500, but in the formulae, you could make the references go down to A1000. That gives you extra room. And as you add the data in, uh, the formulae should update. So that's creating a situation where you can keep adding data to the, to the database and the formulae should update, simply increasing the range that the um, row references in the formula refer to. So this is the first possible approach and, and this will work perfectly fine, but there is a downside to these approach. Well, there's a downside to all three approaches I'm going to uh, cover, but the downside to this first approach is if you if you allow a lot of room, so for example, if you have 10,000 or more empty rows, then Excel is going to be doing a lot of calculation because Excel is going to check through that whole range and this will detract from the efficiency of the spreadsheet. So you might find that the spreadsheet slows down, it takes a long time to calculate. So there's probably, there's a balance to strike there, there's a trade-off between uh, making the database big enough for, for you to be able to add data to it without worrying about it, uh, but also small enough so that it doesn't take a long time to calculate and so that you don't lose too much efficiency uh, in that sense. So, so this is the first possible approach, simply, simply adjusting those row references to allow for extra room. Now the second approach, and the approach that I use myself usually uh, when working with database formulae is to use a dynamic named range. That's a dynamic named range for the, uh, for the columns that we're working with. So what do we mean by dynamic named range? Well, if you've watched um, lots of my videos, you'll know I'm very interested in the offset formula and we have a video series on the offset formula. So if, if you just Google Tiger offset formula, you'll be able to watch our series on the offset formula. The offset formula is useful because it allows us to, to create a dynamic range. And a dynamic range increases in size 
as data is added to it. It increases in size as data is added to it. And we can facilitate this using the offset formula. So this could also be really useful to us when we're thinking about applying the database formula. If we could have a named range that increases as data is added to the database, then that's another possible way for us to manage our database formula because the formulae uh, will update because of the dynamic range the formulae will update and that means the analysis will encompass the whole database that means we can keep adding rows to the database so this is the second approach and the approach I recommend personally is using dynamic named ranges um, to allow the database references to increase as the database itself increases as rows are added to the database so that's the second approach and the third approach is to use Excel's format as table, format as table option. Now this is the approach I have least experience with, but I have seen people out there using it and using it successfully. So if you select all your data, uh, go to the home tab, and then you can find format as data, format as data on the format as table, sorry, format as table on the home tab. and. This means that Excel treats the, the range of data that you select as a table and it gives the columns in the table names. And these columns, rather like a dynamic named range, these columns, the references, update to include additional data added below. So this is another possible approach when we're thinking about managing databases, being able to add more data to databases and keeping the formula working. We could also use uh, format as table under the home tab and you can experiment with that see if you can get it working for you so there's three possible options there and I have used all three of those options um, at some point although format as table not very often I usually go for the second option the dynamic named range these have allowed me um, well, allow me to create solutions for customers where they can keep adding data to the database and get the analysis they need. Because you want to avoid the situation where you're having to update formulae every time you add data uh, to the database. So there's just some, uh, some ideas, really, some reflective ideas about how to uh, apply these database formulae and possible difficulties and how to work around uh, those difficulties. So that's the Excel database formulae for beginner series. I really hope you got something out of the series and I hope you'll take a look through the other videos on the channel too. Um, so you've had a good look at formulae now. If you've never tried coding in Excel using VBA, I'd recommend having getting into code and and if you're interested in doing that, you can have a look at our uh, Excel VBA for beginners uh, playlist as well. So that's the end of this video series. As I said, I hope it's helpful for you 